Hey, it's Joe Glines from the Automator, and we're going to record uh, what we automated this week with AutoHotKey. Let me uh, switch over to share on my screen here. And you know what? Um, I think I've done this last time, too. Let me, before I do anything, hit me hit my hotkey to jump up the DPI. I don't know why when you DPI, it, it moves the things on your desktop, but that's just weird. But that's not our script. I think it's just when you whenever you change the DPI, that's what happens. So move them out of the way. All right, now let me use Prompt Assistant to start our most recently made files. I think we focused a lot this week. Yeah, only 33 files worked on this week. Uh, these first three with Alex, uh, he's a HK Hero member, and he was asking for some consulting on a given topic on this Shin's image scan class uh, in V2. And there were some problems with it working on Chrome, uh, or I think any browser. And so, of course, we want to make sure we're knowledgeable when we go to do a tutoring session with him. So I asked Irfan to, to study it. And Irfan discovered some really interesting things. And it turns out, I think Shin's class, the controls we're looking at on the image scan, if you give it a title, a window title of like Chrome, well, it isn't necessarily the right thing mapped where the image is. So we identified something there, which we're going to have to finish up on. But... Um, there's definitely some problems with it. And also, with Automate My Task, which we're starting to convert to V2, by the way, um, we noticed, I, I noticed in the past, similar issues in that if you gave it a title, no, if you gave it a class, it wouldn't find the image. But if you remove the class and title, it would find them, but it would be searching everywhere, right? So, yeah, um, maybe there's something to that in both of those of, of what's going on there. Um, and here's the Automate My Task in a V2. We're actually creating it like in a wizard format, which is going to be really cool. So, There'll be steps that you go through instead of having one GUI with 8 million things on it. Uh, all right, 7 million. There'll be um, fewer things on it, and so it'll be easier to, to basically give a structure and flow for people to follow. Because it's built for people who don't automate, right? Um, so that's that. Uh, yeah, we're working on it. Um, I'll, of course, let you know when it's available. But yeah, it's, it's we're just working on the GUI right now. And Isaias gave us a really good idea of how to do a build a GUI and keep some buttons the same on every control, but have um, the other parts of the goal control. I think it was like an iframe on a website, right? So here, like your navigation here stays the same, but these buttons all change. And so we, we recorded a video on it. Unfortunately, we had the wrong screen being shared and it didn't capture the right screen. So we're gonna have to redo that video, but we'll, we'll make one at some point. This um, effortless video reducer, I, I talked about it last week. It's really cool, as this is the MP3 to MP4 file uh, tool. that They both use FFmpeg. Those, we were putting some polishing touches on them in the, uh, F, the effortless video reducer. That one, what I realized is we have a multiplier of how fast, like if you drag in a one hour video, it tells you, depending on, of course, the... Um, speed you selected which has to do with how many times it kind of rechecks the image and tries to do a better job of doing it it um some go sometimes it's like a one to one sometimes it's three to one sometimes ten to one so if you had a ten to one and it's an hour it'd take you six minutes so what i told her fan was hey instead of making people do math in their head let's calculate that and show it on the screen so that's probably our last tweak we're going to do before we release that um tool so yeah, the remove metadata, if you ever have titles and descriptions and other things that you don't want in your videos, it's not easy to remove. Um, and so our tool, we have a separate tool for it, but it also is part of this effort, the video reducer, it automatically re re removes the metadata, which is great. Um, so that's that, the text overlay. So we had a call with a, a hero member. Now he is really, really advanced. And he... Um, we tried to help him, but he had tried through everything we could think of on how to automate a certain program. So um, we didn't go there. But in the call, he mentioned certain times he is stuck in front of a TV and he'd like to be able to watch the courses on his TV. And I said, okay, yeah, I said, I, I'm the same way, right? I, I watch, actually, I watch our courses on my TV, but mine are on my network. So I can actually play them. Um, I have, of course, the MP4 files. And he, we don't normally give those out and... Um, it's just really because of copyright stuff and someone would take it and start distributing it and we lose all our revenue, right? So that's why we don't want to do it. But I remembered we had an FFM MPEG tool that would overlay text onto it. So I told him we're going to make a version of it that has his name on it at random places at different times in different videos. 
And so if we ever saw it somewhere, we would know who leaked the video. And that makes me less resistant to providing MP4 files. Um, Cause I know maybe he'll share it with one person, but it's not going to go to thousands of people. Right. So, cause even if you buy our course, you could just let someone use their login and you know, we're not tracking that. Right. Um, so anyway, so that's uh, what th this text overlay. It's really cool um, that FFmpeg is crazy powerful. And what I also realized on that one was the version I had put the text up on the screen at all times. Um, what we needed to do was figure out how to actually display it at certain times and not the entire video because we don't want to do that. Uh, it looks like Irfan was doing some, some more work on Rafadium and some of the examples. So that's another great way if you want a robust tool for web scraping, Rafadium is, is really awesome for using AutoHotKey. If you're doing advanced stuff, it's a really good solution. Uh, the one downfall is that you have to basically shut down your browser and kick it off in this other mode so you can, we can control it. Um, so there's that, that, and that. Search and place. Now, this one, Irfian, had, I was updating the newsletter for on LinkedIn, and it... Um, we made it where it automates putting in um, embedding the video link, the YouTube link, into the call, into the newsletter. And that used to take me a fair amount of time. And so he, he made a little script that we used auto control, which we need to make another video on auto control. It's a great extension for Chrome. Zeus. Sorry, I had a doggy emergency to go outside. Anyway, um, the search and replace, yeah. So we inserted, we made a... You use auto control to inject uh, JavaScript into the DOM to where I can insert a, an embed button, and I have a hotkey that just hits it and does it. So that's really cool. Um, Delicia, surprise that got updated. That um, when people come in through the automator, they check when they get downloads. They check different boxes, and unfortunately, there was no automatic way to take that information and shove it into our newsletter signing them up for different drip campaigns. And so every day this script gets run and says, hey, did you say you're retired? Okay, that you go into this one. Did you say you're an entrepreneur? You go in this one. Did you say you're a manager? You go into that one. Did you say you're a student? You go into that one. So that's what that script's doing. I don't know why, I guess Isaiah must have changed that, but oh, oh hey, that's funny. That This is the script right here. Um, today, Sunday, um, 27 people said they were a student. 29 said they were an employee. That's crazy, the timing. I'm actually talking about it. That was not planned. Um, six said they're an entrepreneur, and six said they were retired, or soon to be retired. So that was that script, live uh, doing it. That's hilarious. Um, we're working on a stopwatch script. So that one, it, which I demonstrated the stopwatch itself, but what I wanted was a way to automate to say, wait until... A window exists or a program exists to start it or to stop it so that's what that one is um, the checklist this one checklist to do um, let, let's go to it let me let me show it that one will I think next week we should be able to share it let me bring this over um, and I think it's just this one I can oh here's Joe's version so I can run it um, and I, I told actually so maybe he hasn't done that one yet but we need to trim when there's blank spaces so let's go into preferences when there's blanks, we should be trimming those. So I was doing some testing here. So now that's that. I'm going to hit apply. Um, oh, and I should have looked at the hotkey. Um, what are my... Um, control shift W. So if I hit control shift W, it shows it. But look, I can, I can select it. I can cross them off, right? So that's really cool. And then we're working on, I don't know if this will be in version 2 or version 1, but the, an export and import option, um, I think that'll be under preferences instead of here. But we have different, you can have different to-do lists and work on them. And so, yeah, we have a lot of things, we have some that for every time we create a download, we have a really long checklist and it'd be nice to have this so we can glance at and see what was done and what isn't done. So that way when you, normally we delete it entirely, but then you don't even remember what was there. Right? This gives you a nice visual reminder of what you did or didn't do. Uh, so, but sometimes I just have like, Hey, I have a quick, I have an hour and I have a bunch of work to do. So what, what can I get done? So you write them up and then now you have a nice visual and this is a very psychological rewarding way of knowing what you did that day. Right. Um, and maybe we'll have that right to a log file. So for a boss, like they can keep track of what their employees did. Right. So that would be pretty cool. Um, yeah. So that's that script. Um, yeah, several of those. 
here's that so the, the preferences for that um toggle between monitor now this one's almost done as well i'm not going to demonstrate it here because it really requires you to have more than one screen shared but you pick between multiple monitors and you can assign a hotkey for it so when you click it it will throw that window over to the other monitor and then you can go over to that monitor and click it it throws it back it toggles between two monitors um, if you click it on a third monitor it'll throw it into one of those two and then it toggles between those two so I used to use this thing a lot. I asked Irfan to convert it to V2 and then, or sorry, Rizwan to convert it to V2. And then I said, hey, let's build a preference center so people can select their hotkey. Uh, we actually had to do, I, I can show you that. This was an interesting thing we did. Um, so when I launch it, and I don't know, let me go to the preferences here. Um, so here you see, we actually borrowed, and I'll show you, we stole it from Jean in, in QAP. Oh, that's not QAP. Um, not that one let me go to customize in so this one is qap here's our tool and in in qap when we go to select something let me say edit and edit and menu options and add a hotkey so you can see this is his version right here this is this and there's a mouse or keyboard even though i think he did a good job for me and i'm not knocking what he did it was a little bland and so um i said let's let's put this and let's put the mouse let's make that text red and this one blue and hey what's red and blue make together purple that means these purple things go with both of these things right so th that's a combination of one or the other of those not both but you can come in here and you can select a hot key or you can select a keyboard key but you can't select both and that's the same thing he has it here this is the mouse or so we have an or here and an and he doesn't imply and here which is still fine right it's it's his tool it's fine um I wanted to make it a little more clear of like you get modifier keys and if you turn these all off i don't know if he's added this part yet yeah so you need to select one modifier key uh, although that font that shouldn't be in the header that should be um the actual body and say like warning in the header and the body there i've also noticed this says monitor one here on my other monitors it tells you which monitors which so you can pick here oh i want monitors two and three hopefully that if it's two and two also it'll say um Oh, I can't even enable it. Cool. All right. There we go. Cool. So one and two. One and two. Yeah, that's what I want. Oh, there's got a problem there. But yeah, you get the idea. Um, it's it's a really... Uh, um, and we had Rizwan add the add to startup because it's one... Trust me, once you get used to it, you will absolutely love that script. It's, it's really, really, really addictive and helpful. Um, so I guess he was doing some work here in the checklist. So yeah, so we're, uh, I guess that's what we've done. If, if, uh, again, we, you know, we're the largest auto hockey channel out there. We just passed 10,000 subscribers. We do have a lot of auto hockey courses that all come with a 200% money back guarantee. So if you want to learn how to do this yourself, you can do that. Or maybe you can join the hero group, which is a great program. We have three hours a week of custom, you know, training and, and helping people with their code and teaching them on basic topics. Well, not basic. It's whatever they want to learn. And, also, if you don't want to do any of this, you just want someone to do the work for you, you know, we do done for you consulting services as well. So if that uh, helped you at all, please like the video. It really helps us out and hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching. Cheers.